Hi everyone. So in this video I wanted to show you how to configure the environment for the course using GitHub code spaces. We already have a video about environment preparation, so this is video 1.2. And what we are going to do now in this video is an alternative to that video. So if you've watched that video, it's okay, you can do that. But instead of doing that, you can do GitHub code you, you can use GitHub code spaces and it, this is much, much, much simpler. Uh, if we check this video, it's uh, it's not that long, 15 minutes, but our video, current video, will probably be much shorter and we'll probably also cover more stuff. It's very easy, I promise, so let's start. So, oh, for that we need uh, to have a GitHub account and I'm going to go to my GitHub account and I'm going to create a new repository. So let me just refresh it. So this is what you typically see. You click New Repository, and then you type in some name. I'll call it MLOps Zoom Camp. You can call it something like that. So let's also add a readme file and git ignore template for Python. Okay, that's uh, it's a good idea to have it public. It has to be public actually, because uh, when you publish your homework, Remember, you will need the link to your homework in order to use it for um, the um, for submitting the homework. Yeah. Um, so make it public. And let's create a repo. We created the repo, and now the next thing we are going to do is click on this code thing, and here I have the code spaces tab open. If you have local tab open, then just go to code spaces, and then click create code spaces on main and now we already have the environment well it's uh, been prepared but actually yeah this is already something so as you see we can we have a terminal here uh, this is nothing else but Visual Studio Code running in your browser so like there's terminal and we can already so it has docker installed in that video environment preparation we actually need to install docker and all that stuff here it's already there so we don't need to do that and you can see docker run hello world so the docker is configured and then docker compose is also there so we don't need to do these things like install docker install docker compose so we just skip these steps right and uh, yeah working from the browser is not always convenient and actually for some things we will not be able to uh, just run it from the browser uh, for example when we want to run uh, Jupyter notebooks or MLflow we need to be able to forward ports so we need to be able to connect to these services from our computer and I don't think it's possible to do it through the browser version. So what we need to do instead is click on that thing and click on Open in VS Code Desktop. I think alternatively, if you click here, yeah, it's the same thing. Open in Visual Studio Code Desktop. Of course, for that you need to have Visual Studio Desktop installed. Um, yeah. So this is how it looks on Windows. I think on every operating system it will look uh, in the same way. So now we are connecting to these code spaces from my Visual Studio code, from my local Visual Studio code, and it actually feels like it's running on my machine, right? So when you, like, you can use it like as if it's your uh, local thing. So like, there is no latency. This is an example. And then uh, now I'm going to open the terminal. For that, I click Ctrl tilde. And you can already see that we changed this readme file. And actually, um, even before that, uh, I think I did not mention that you have to have Visual Studio Code, uh, like an extension installed. Uh, and the extension you need is called GitHub Code Spaces. I already have it. You can just git type github code spaces and you need to install it. I already have it installed, that's why it's working. Mm, yeah, 
it might also prompt you to install GitHub Code Spaces when you run it for the first time. And now we changed uh, we changed this readme file. We can see that. Right, what we can do is and uh, by the way, when I did this GitHub um, diff, now to exit this I press Q. I, I was too fast to do that. Mm, yeah, in order to exit that you need to press Q. And now you can just add readme file and say this is my first commit. All right, and then you push and then this is pushed to GitHub, so you don't even need to configure anything. And by the way, we can close that already. And now if I refresh, I can see my commit there. So now let's install um, the things we need. And we have a list here uh, in the intro module. So we need to download and install Anaconda. And the rest is actually related to Docker. So basically the only thing we need right now is download and install Anaconda. I will use the rather old version from this video. So this video is two years old, so I'll use the same um, version from the video. Feel free to use the f newer version of Anaconda or feel free to just use the Python that comes in with uh, code spaces. And I think if we check that, um, sorry, I need to go to terminal Python minus V. So this is a new version of Python 3.10. Feel free to use that and install all the packages yourself. Uh, what we are going to do instead is we are actually going to use Anaconda. I don't remember the version of Python in that Anaconda. I think it's 3.9. Uh, and yeah, so right now what I did is I copied this uh, command wget and uh, basically this command and path to the um, installer of Anaconda and it was quite fast so now I just do bash Anaconda and we need to carefully read the agreement uh, like we always do so yes and now we need to confirm that we accept if you of course provided that you have read and you understand what you're accepting you accept and then just accept the default location and now it's um, installing Anaconda. While it's installing, we can create some folder structure. So I can create uh, the first folder already um, 0, 01 minus intro. And uh, yeah, it may take like half a minute or maybe a minute to install it. I'll just quickly pause it. I think it was a minute, slightly more maybe, but it has installed everything. And now it asks if we want to initialize Anaconda. Then I just say yes. It's adding some stuff to bash slash rc. So if we do cat bash rc, we can see that it added new stuff. So it initialized Conda. So now we need to uh, open a new terminal. I can just do this by typing bash. So now I kind of... It's the same as creating a new terminal uh, window, which I can just do here by pressing the plus. And now if I do which Python, it is using Python coming from Anaconda. So if I do Python minus V, then it's Python 3.9 not the system Python, which is Python 3.10 something, right? So now we use Python from Anaconda and now I can actually go to the intro folder and here now we want to do the homework. I will start Jupyter Notebook by typing Jupyter Notebook and it will now start the server yeah, I don't know why it's asking that, you can just ignore that. But the interesting thing is if you go to ports, we see that it uh, discovered that there is an open port and it automatically forwarded it. I already have uh, a few Jupiters running on my local machine, that's why it connected, forwarded the port 8888 on the remote to port 8891 on the local machine. So now I can just click open in the browser or maybe this link, control click, uh, and then it will open it. We need 
now it asks for the token, right? We need to go to terminal and copy the token from here. Let me make sure I correctly copy it. Yeah. So now we have Jupiter running. It's running on the remote machine on code, code spaces, but it feels like it's running locally because of the port forwarding. And now let's create a new notebook. We will call it, let's say, homework. Homework. This is where we will do the homework number one. And we can already import pandas. So the version of pandas is, I don't know if it's old or not, but like it can do everything we need. So for example, let's read the parquet file. So we can do this by doing read parquet. And now we will need to put a URL of our parquet file. So I'll just take uh, this 2022 January yellow taxi trips record. I copied the URL, pasted it here. Now it's let's execute it, and it complains because we don't have a library for reading parquet files. We can quickly install it without leaving Jupyter Notebook by running pip install install by error or fast parquet, doesn't matter. And what we do here is actually the same as running it. Let me open another terminal window. Running this command here in the terminal, except we run it uh, immediately in Jupyter by adding this excla exclamation mark in front. So now let's read it one more time. I will remove that by clicking on the X button. And now we see that we are able to open the parquet file successfully and read it. And since we have an uh, Anaconda, we can also uh, use scikit-learn. So scikit-learn comes built in. And this is probably not the most fresh version of scikit-learn, but this is the same we use in the course videos, so it's fine. So now you can go and follow the homework and after it's done you can go back to the terminal do git add intro git status so it added this intro and git commi commit right homework one solution git push now if we go back to the browser, um, so this is our repo. Notice that we didn't need to configure any SSH keys or whatever, like we could just publish, could, could just push to GitHub. And this is our homework solution, which we can use in the homework form. Right, so you copy this link and put this to the homework form. Um, so this is how you configure the environment, that was quite easy, and um, I think the only thing we still need to do, I still need to show you, is how to stop it. So you can stop it, you don't have to do this actually, like it detects uh, inactivity, and then it stops automatically, but you can just uh, go here to code, code spaces, and this ideal computing machine. This is a randomly generated name. You can just stop the code space. All right. And actually, if you have any uncommitted changes, it preserves the changes, so it saves the changes, and you can restart the code space later and continue working. But let's say you want to um, completely remove it. So if you do that, we will remove Anaconda, we will remove everything we configured. You shouldn't do this, but in case you want, then you can just do delete here, right? And then, uh, like, I'm not sure about um, pricing, so that there are some, okay, maybe if we just quickly do GitHub code spaces pricing. It's free up to a certain point, but then it becomes, uh, yeah, so like 120 hours is quite a lot. Mm, and then you can 
also like if you need more then you can pay too I, I don't think you you'll need to pay for that so that's it mm, yeah I think here now you can easily do the entire course so you will probably need to configure AWS in the same way as you configure your local instance mm, and uh, yeah for second module you just do pip install mlflow to install mlflow it will automatically forward the port when you run mlflow mm. yeah I think that's more or less it so let me know how easy it was for you and enjoy the course see you soon